can you prevent a disaster with this? How can you send a probe to Europa with this? How did we go from this to this in the span of three lifetimes? By watching this show, obviously. This is the Quality Digest Roadshow, and our mission is to answer those questions and a thousand more. It comes from the world leader of metrology news, Quality Digest. If you're like most people, and most people are, right now you're asking, what the hell is metrology? Metrology is the science and practice of measurement. It's measurement the same way this is basketball, the same way this is singing, and the same way this is balancing. Yes, it's obscure. Yes, it can be confused with mineralogy, the study of minerals, or meteorology, the study of weather, which you'd think would be the study of meteors, but you know, whatever. Some among you may be asking, just why should I care about measurement? The short answer, because your life might just depend on it. The longer, more interesting answer? For that, we hit the road. Over this series, I'll be driving across the country, tackling the big questions about why things are as they are and why they work as they work. I'll be grabbing the best experts in science, manufacturing, and more, and I won't let go until they've answered. Then, I'll edit those answers into something you can enjoy on your phone. The I there is me, Christopher Allen Smith, Emmy Award-winning filmmaker, and that's where the impressive details end. I have three qualities ideal for hosting this trip. A, a wide interest but ample ignorance, good for questioning. B, a car. Three, guess I only needed two. To answer why metrology is the secret science that transformed the world, we start this journey in Chico, California, known, of course, as the one-time world headquarters of Quality Digest, and as the shooting location of Sherwood Forest in Errol Flynn's The Adventures of Robin Hood. We're all very proud. From here, I'll be driving 98 miles to Auburn, California, famous for its Gold Rush past and as the hometown for George and Lenny from John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. I haven't read it myself, but I'm sure it's got a happy ending. We're here to talk to Dirk Ducharum, the longtime host of many of Quality Digest's broadcasts and the editor-in-chief of the Digest. He's the most trusted man in metrology news, the Walter Cronkite of the industry, if that was not going to send you off on a web search for who Walter Cronkite is and time comes for us all, kids. Anyway, keep in mind, none of what you're seeing here comes from his journalism salary. He married up. So what kinds of things is metrology used for? Do you want me to be looking at you or at the camera? Uh, either one. Off to a great start. Super authoritative. What kinds of things is metrology used for? Look around this room. Uh, literally, uh, literally everything. You can't see my face right now, but this is where I realize I'm making a show about everything. If we're talking about, uh, you know, the thickness of uh, the thickness of this uh, of this phone here uh, so had to be measured and had to be measured to precise tolerances. That's metrology. Um, you know the, the the castings that went in to make these 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 burners. They had to be measured so that these these grates fit in the stove every single time, uh, no matter uh, which uh, serial number of the stove it is. Right, the the, the castings got to be measured. Everything that you touch, everything that you see practically involves metrology. The colors, uh, the color of this wall, for instance. You've probably been to a, a, a big box store, uh, maybe to do match paint, right? You, maybe you took a paint chip with you. They stuck it into a machine. What's that machine doing? It's measuring. Uh, that's metrology. It's, uh, it's looking at the spectrum of colors and it's coming up with a, a, a paint match, which uh, gives the, the operator uh, precision amounts of uh, colorant to add to the base in order to give you that wall color. That's metrology. Literally everything in this room has been touched by metrology or measurement. Brick, are you just looking at things in the office and saying that you love them? I love lamp. 
Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. Joking aside, Dirk's not wrong. Metrology is a paradox. Boring on the surface, essential to everything that's exciting. So what does professional measurement look like? What happens when it works? And what happens when it doesn't? Let's let Dirk set the table. The ubiquitous tape measure. So we, we were talking earlier about, you know, what's the importance of, of having standards and so forth. Believe it or not, there is the standard for tape measures. NIST has a standard that... FYI, NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. NIST has a standard that over a six-foot tape measure, that it should be accurate to within one thirty-second of an inch. Why is this important? So imagine you're building a house and you've got lots of carpenters. It would be pretty wacky, wouldn't it, if my tape measure measured differently than your tape measure. You'd be off on one side of the house measuring eight feet. I'd be measuring eight feet on my side of the house, but um, our tape measures are three inches different. That wouldn't work, would it? There are standards for everything so that this tape measure measures the same as your tape measure, which measures the same as every tape measure in the United States. This tape measure problem is why Sweden is thought of as a pleasant Scandinavian country and not a globe-spanning empire. To explain, I'm going back to Stockholm, Sweden in 1628. Here, they're building a mighty warship, the Vasa. In a way, the Vasa could be seen as the B-2 bomber of its day, the cutting edge war-making technology. It was the ambition of Sweden's king, Gustavus Adolphus, to join the British, French, and Spanish in straddling the oceans of the world. If Adolphus had succeeded, and after all, his people were descended from Vikings, who can say if it was the Swedish Empire and not the British on which the sun never set? Unfortunately for Adolphus, the building crews in the Stockholm shipyards mixed their measurements. The work crews on the starboard side used the Amsterdam foot consisting of 11 inches, while those on the port side used the Swedish foot made of 12 inches. You see, Back then, every country, province, and even town had different inches, feet, and yards. Churches often had a pole stuck to their walls so people could know how long a yard was in that town. Anyway, when the Vasa launched on its maiden voyage, it promptly rolled over and sank taking King Adolphus's ambitions with it. And that is the importance of the science of metrology and traceability of metrology standards is that no matter where you are, that if you're using some sort of measurement device uh, and it's been constructed properly, it's going to be the same within margins across anywhere in the universe. Traceable is what makes metrology different from measurement. Traceable means making this measurement the same as that measurement, the same as the next. That difference is what makes it possible to go from accurately putting together this to accurately putting together this. Traceable is a fancy word for making sure everyone's measurements match. This gets a little dorm room high on your own supply here, but it pays off. How do we know an inch is an inch? A pound is a pound, or rather, a kilogram is a kilogram. For this, we thank the French. This is the kilogram, the kilogram. Back in the 1790s, when the French were having their revolution, made famous by the guillotine, they wanted to start their whole society over. They wanted to get rid of all these measurements based on this king's foot or that church's yard bar or this province's inch. They wanted a rational system for their rational new country. And let's give them an A for effort. They broke all measurements down into units of 10. Meters replaced the yard, kilometers replaced the mile, and kilograms replaced the pound. And voila, the metric system was born. And this original kilogram was the standard to which all other kilogram weights in the world were measured. They had to trace the reason for the word, their accurate measurements as kilograms back to this. The French Revolution faded. But over the next 150 years, the metric system became the standard for everyone in the world, more or less. 
So why this matters, particularly if we talk global manufacturing, uh, suppose I make a part at my facility here in the United States that has to mate with a part manufactured by some company in Germany. And let's say I'm making a piston, and that piston has to measure exactly 2.63 centimeters. And the company in Germany is making a cylinder block that has a hole in it, and that hole has to precisely fit the piston that I'm making. If our measurements are vastly different, when those two parts come together, they're either gonna rattle around or they're not gonna fit. The, the fact that there are standards and that they are traceable to calibration labs around the entire world ensures that stuff fits. Calibration labs are a can of worms that we will get into in a future episode. The upshot is it's the modern equivalent of that original kilogram weight which set the standard for everyone to match. So we've seen what it's like with everybody wildcatting around in a world without metrology. So why is it the secret science that transformed the world? As this video comes out in the mid 2020s, things might seem a little challenging in the world. But on a material level, living in the 21st century is a literal paradise to anyone born before 1960. When you get metrology right, you can build things like this. We can fly probes across the solar system to discover new things about the universe. And we can even use the desktop scanner built to scan family photos to instead measure the rainfall in the time of the Mayan Empire. Most of those stories are coming up in future episodes, so spoiler alert. But we close today with a special example. Let me introduce you to Ray Ryan, a metrologist and former vice president of East Coast Metrology. One of his biggest projects was working on the fusion reactor at the Lawrence Livermore Lab. Its purpose is to develop clean, sustainable, and near limitless fusion power. In fact, you may have seen the reactor when it starred in Star Trek Into Darkness as the warp core for the USS Enterprise. You know, funny story, my brother-in-law lives a town over from Livermore and through a bank shot of fate, he got to play an extra in that movie. There he is, look at him go, nearly laying out Captain Kirk. As a lifelong Star Trek fan, I am not jealous in the slightest and it makes things giving super. Anyway, with the fusion reactor at Lawrence Livermore Lab on your resume, you might think that's Ryan's finest achievement. No, not even close. Probably in the last 10 years, I got involved in doing installations of what's called proton therapy. This may be a little philosophical, but we are a spoiled people. When you do radiation for cancer treatments, you're using essentially photons. You're trying to uh, irradiate a tumor and that energy, when it enters the, when it enters the skin, it impacts the same amount of energy going in as it is in the tumor, as well as going out the back. We see wonders made possible by metrology, phones that let us see and talk to any human on the planet, look up any known human fact, and we complain about doom scrolling. We board planes that take us as far in a day as it took a dangerous lifetime to travel 150 years ago. And we stress about checked bags. Photons are something that can be energized at distance. And so it's a little like 3D printing, where it goes in at a low energy state, doesn't damage any surrounding tissue, and it can be painted like a 3D printing in layers. And in fact, if there was a critical blood vessel or even the spine, you can go around it without energizing in that particular sensitive area. And I got involved in several installations. And the impactful part was I would stay on site at, say, the, the, the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. What's going on around us are miracles made by science and cleverness in working people, making sure everything is measured and cut and put together right. And when I was there, I would stay at a hotel right next door to the hospital. Well, the families of kids getting treatment there also stayed in that hotel. That metrology, those developments, all those boring attentions to detail, they add up every day. Sure, 
Sometimes the differences is making a phone one millimeter thinner when no one asked for the thinnest phone ever, Apple. But sometimes it's a proton beam threading that one millimeter gap between an artery and a spine and curing a child of cancer. And so I'd be having dinner next to families who were seeing their children while they were staying there getting cancer treatments. And I knew they were getting proton therapy treatments. And so it was pretty significant to see the results of your work directly applicable in someone sitting right next to you. Metrology may sound boring, but boring is underrated. We look forward to having you on the road with us.